Welcome back to the Unplayable Podcast, and this is another episode of our Big Bash series. And we've got a big one for you today. That's right, we've got a club captain. We've got Sydney Thunder skipper Jason Sanger talking to us ahead of KFC BBL 12. Now, Sanger had a breakout season last year, and he's been rewarded with the full-time captaincy for the upcoming summer, and it's exciting news for him as he looks to make his mark in Australian cricket with another great summer. BBL starts tonight, December 13th, so get your tips in in BKT Big Bash Tipping. Head to tipping.cricket.com.au and you could win some pretty fantastic prizes, including 10 grand for the overall winner. So jump over there, submit your tips, take on your friends, your family, your colleagues, even some randoms, and make sure you walk away with bragging rights from BBL 12. Now, they take on the Stars tonight in the opening game, so let's not waste any more time. Let's jump straight into Jack Painter's chat with Jason Sanger. All right, we're joined by the new Sydney Thunder captain, Jason Sanger, making his debut on the Unplayable podcast. Jason, welcome, and uh, congratulations. What's it mean to be captain of the Thunder for you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack. Um, Yeah, look, obviously a bit of a dream come true, really. Like, it's... uh... Oh, I mean, I can remember, you know, watching BBI one games or watching, you know, Warner and um and get and Chris Gale go and open the batting for the Sydney Thunder and I was like, Man, imagine being part of that team or being part of that setup and I think, you know, fast forward twelve seasons now, um, getting the opportunity to, to, to captain's really like a almost a full cycle or like or a dream come true. So, um, yeah, very, very privileged, very honored. Um, but I'm quite lucky this year, you know, I've got a lot of experience around me. Um you know, guys like Chris Green, uh, Ben Cutting, and you throw in your internationals as well, like Riley Russo and Alex Hales. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of leadership qualities there and there's a lot of experience. And um, I'm just really excited to, to, I guess, be a part of that and see how that all sort of blends in together. You're obviously no stranger to captaining. You've captained the other, Aussie under-19s, your club side, Randwick, Randwick Petersham. Um, you're vice captain of New South Wales. You filled in for the Thunder last year when... Um, had the sort of COVID cases, but in terms of like the senior leadership positions, does it feel like it's happened pretty quickly for you in the last uh, year or so? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I think the reason for that is because I think my club, Ramming Petersham, you know, when, you know, I got given the opportunity to captain, you know, first grade, uh, I would have been about 19 then I reckon, maybe even eight, oh, probably about 19, 20. And, you know, I think that sort of really kick-started, I guess, my I, w- I want to say my captaincy sort of career or like my journey this far, um, you know, getting the captain guys that you played, guys that you played, you know, first grade with, you know, when you first, when I first came into the team when I was 16 and then suddenly captaining in them four years later, that was my first experience of, I guess, um, being, I guess, a little bit scared and a little bit nervous. And, you know, you play, you look up to these guys who you, you know, who you start date, who you first debut with and then, now you're captaining, you're captaining them, and I can remember it so vividly. Like my my first first grade captain um, when I came to Ramwick, Adam Semple. You know, he presented me my cap at Ramwick, and then I fast forward four years later, and I'm the one that's telling him, "Hey, mate, like hold hold there, like that's enough." And it just felt so weird, and I was just like, "Man, like this is a guy that I looked up to at, at our club for so long, and now that I'm getting having to captain him, it feels really different." Um, I think I I think. Without that experience and that taste early, um, I think I wouldn't have been as probably prepared as I would have been for the last little journey. Um, had a game for the Blues, right, captain down in South Australia. Had those three games when, when, when Greedy got COVID last year as well. So I've had a little bits and pieces and, and, and little taste of captaincy here and there and a bit of leadership stuff. But I guess to have the, the reins for the full season um, is a first. And, yeah, it's definitely a lot different to under-19s cricket, that's for sure. And they talk about, you know, playing senior cricket as a, as a junior, you know, really um, accelerates your, your progress and helps you, you know, become a, a sort of, I guess, a hard and tough cricketer and with those experience. What's it like being a captain in those situations as well? That must be, you know, you know accelerated much, much uh, further and quicker. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I've got to thank my, my first club in Newcastle, um, Walls End District Cricket Club. You know, I played first grade in Newcastle when I was 13 and, Jeez, um, <laughs> like the the fact of playing men's cricket at thirteen is scary enough. But then you got the little other stuff as well, like you know being in the change room with them and stuff like that. We all know what happens in cricket change rooms. Like it's it's uh, can definitely be daunting to a thirteen year old. So like 
I, I, I don't want to say that sort of hardened me up or it, it, it fast tracked me in any way, but I think it just it gave me that experience and it gave me that that sense of being uncomfortable a little bit. Um, mainly on the cricket field, the guys are legends off the field, but mainly on the cricket field, you know, playing against men and playing in a men's competition. <clears throat> I can remember actually. I can remember my first first game, first grade game for, in Newcastle. I um, I came from junior cricket and I was walking over to play men's in the Arvo and I walked over in my whites, just thinking that like, you know, as you do as a 12, 13 year old kid, you know, you go to the game in your whites. Um, walked up to grade, my first grade game in my whites and everyone was like, come on, man, like, what are you, what are you doing? So I guess those little lessons along the way in men's cricket, you learn every now and then. Um, definitely, I think, help build you a little bit more and build that, I guess, that resilience a little bit more but <clears throat> you throw in captaincy in there now and I think yeah like you know I've always been very fortunate um throughout my career I've always had a lot of good role models in all the teams that I've been in um you know from my club cricket days great great cricket going into the blue setup now and you've got guys like you know I'm Moses and Ricks for the Sixers um you know Curtis Patterson now our captain at the Blues then you come to the Thunder and you throw Dave Warner who's going to be coming joining our squad after the New Year's test so I've always had that opportunity and those experiences to, I guess, um, have those role models and those leaders around me. Um, and I guess I've just taken little bits and pieces of everyone and, and try to blend to myself. But yeah, look, as a 13 year old first coming into the, into the system, yeah, geez, it's pretty daunting. Talk us through how you know, being a captain helps elevate you, your game. Do you, do you feel it does, um, you know, help you perform better? Um, or just that added responsibility, <laughs> I guess, of, of, being a leader of the side. Yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> I think it's the more the added responsibility. Um, you know, I th- yeah, I think I've always thought to myself as someone that leads by actions probably rather than, than words. I'm a pretty sort of quiet sort of guy. Um, don't only really say too much. If, I'm, if I get too comfortable, I might say a lot, but <laughs> generally speaking, I'm pretty quiet. So I like to think that when I go and captain, it's always been more with my with my actions. And I think, I guess being captain, you know, I, I like to, the added responsibility of making sure that, you know, I do lead by my actions. And that's if as a batter, like when I'm playing and scoring runs and <clears throat> if, I, if I have to bowl, <laughs> I try and take wickets. Yeah. But no, I think, um, I think in some cases it can, um, you know, put that added bit of responsibility, which I definitely enjoy. Um the, the, the challenge is, you know, making sure that when you are captain, you know, when you're out on the field um, and your team's together, you know, you can put your captain's hat on and making sure that, you know, you're, you're trying to make the right changes and, um, and, and whatever. But when you're batting, that's the trickier part, I think. It's making sure you don't you know, take that captain's hat off a little bit and go, okay, I need to focus on my batting job here and, and making sure I do this. And that's something that sort of um, Curtis Patterson and, and Moses sort of taught me, taught me a little bit um, – when I've had little bits and pieces of a bit of leadership stuff. So I guess I'll probably be taking those things into consideration um, going to this year. And Big Bash is quite fast and it's quite far, um, fast paced. So, um, yeah, I probably need to draw back on some of those experiences a little bit more. But it's nice knowing that I've already had that taste um, already, especially in the blue stuff and definitely in, for the BBL last year for those three games. So I um, feel like coming into this year and coming into this role, um, you know, I do feel quite prepared. I did notice in those three games last year that you did sneak a few overs, a few extra overs in those games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how, how is the bowling coming along? Because you're obviously bowling a bit more, even for New South Wales now, than what you had done previously. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> Greeny, Greeny was out. So um, I had a little running joke with Tanvir that I'll take his overs off him um, if you know if he if he starts acting up off the field. And um, nah, he wasn't acting up, but I know how much it, it you yeah. know. He always reminds me of the day against the Renegades. We played him at Marvel and, he bowled three overs and I bowled one. So he's like, you need more four overs, man. I'm like, oh, yeah. He's going to remind me of that for a long time. But um, no, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I guess if the opportunity presents itself. Um, as a captain, you, you always have that intuition or you always have that gut feeling, oh, you know, I feel like this is going to work. And I think in 2020 cricket, half of it is really luck. Like you can bowl anyone at a certain time. Um, but I guess it's, Sometimes it's a, it's a luckily draw. You just sort of have a pick and go. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling you know this guy might might work in this situation, or <clears throat> you know, it's a surge. And 
generally, you know, it's this bowl who bowls, but I just have this weird feeling this guy could do a job, whatever it might be. And, um, yeah, I think last year, probably being captain, I thought, oh, I think I'm a good chance here, you know, like two, you know, two new batters, right-handers, you know, they're six, seven down. Yeah, I might come on, sneak in one, <laughs> look after the stats. So, um, no, then I think, obviously, this year, you know, with Tanbe, um missing the first half of the season, um, from a Blues point of view, um, really hurt us a little bit. So, um, talking to him and, you know, he was sort of like, you know, this is a good opportunity for you to get some overs in this year. So, make sure you keep bowling. Um, so, I guess in some ways, he's helping me with my bowling and I'm trying to help him with his batting. <laughs> and last year, your season last year was, um, you know, very strong. You know, 445 runs, a breakout year for you, fifth in the competition. How important is it for you this year uh, going into the Big Bash to sort of back that back that season up? Yeah, look, um, yeah, look, I'm going to be honest. Like it's, um, it was a season I probably thought didn't think I I, I could have had. Um, and yeah, look, I think um, I guess in some respects, as a as a player, you know, when you do come off a year that you you think you went quite well and it was quite successful, and um, there's always that expectation of, oh, can you do it again though? Like you know, can you repeat it and and in cricket, you know, everything is a stats base. It is quite statistically statistical based. Um, you know, it's this many runs, this average, this strike rate, um, bowling. It's you know this economy, um, this strike rate as well. Um, and you know, I think, I think last year I probably didn't really have any expectations of how I was going to go. You know, I, I missed the first three games. Um, Sam Whiteman unfortunately got COVID, and then I came in for that game and sort of just went out and just played. Um, and the nature of T20 cricket is, you know, it's always quite hard to find consistency, um, especially every game is so different and your role might be so different as a batter in certain situations. The only time you could probably get the, maybe opening is probably the most uh, consistent you might feel, you know, facing the first the first six overs. But um, as someone who bats probably three, four um, in, that, in that spot, you know, you can come in at any sort of situation. Um, and yeah, I guess like, you know, it's, um, for me, it's about making sure that when I say I don't, I would love to back my season up, probably not so much on a statistical base. Um, but you know, I would love to have more of an impact in games where you know, there was a few games last year where I really felt like I sort of, I sort of let the team down in when I got out and I can vividly remember our last game against the Strikers um, at the MCG. You know, I, I, we they just took the surge. I think I might hit a four for first ball, and the next ball I got out, and I was already on probably 60-odd then, and we only needed sort of 40 runs. So, you know, in that situation, you know, like I would have loved to be in sort of 80 red and got us the win. Um, so, like, little situations like that. I can remember against the Scorchers, we played at Metricon, um, you know, I got out when I was on about 35 and I left young Ollie Davis to do the job and he's a good enough player and he got the job done. But little little innings and games like that where I feel like I could have clutched the game and make sure that I was, I was there at the end or, you know, when my team needed me the most, I, I probably got out. And, and I know sometimes I'm being picky, that's two games. But for me, if I can just make sure that I'm contributing as many wins as, as I can for the team, um, however that looks statistically, um, you know, I'll be able to live with that. Um, yeah, sure, I would love to get 446 runs this year, an average of 50 rather than 49. But, you know, I'm happy to take in, uh, a season that's a bit uh, a lot less runs and a, and a lower average if that means, you know, ultimately we win the trophy um, from a captaincy point of view and a team point of view. But also, like, if I'm making sure that I'm contributing to wins and, and I'm being – and when the team needs me the most, I'm delivering. And, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. It's a valid point you make. And I no, notice you – with New South Wales this season, um, I feel from from watching you, you've been batting quite well. You've just had a lot of starts. You just haven't been able to convert one of those into a bigger score. It's a similar situation where, you know, you'd love to have that impact there as well and, and be able to you know, contribute to some obviously a tough start for New South Wales as well. So. Yeah, man, is oh, as a batter, it's so annoying getting 40s and 50s. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite frustrating. Um, you know, I think, like two, two or three fifties and two forties. Like it's just as a batter, especially in red ball cricket. Like you know, when you get yourself in, you want to cash in. Um, and yeah, I've thrown away a lot of a lot of innings there. And 
and and that that's just that's sometimes that's just cricket, and you know you've got to sometimes learn from that. And unfortunately, I'm making the same mistake a few a few too many times. But um, yeah, look, that's cricket, and I've just got to understand that you know I need to be a little more patient when I can be, and when I get myself to that start, just go, hang on, like let's just cruise for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, and, and obviously it's been a bit of a tricky start to us this year at New South Wales. Um, you know, we're a state that you know, prides herself on, on being successful and, and winning games and winning titles. Um, and, you know, we just haven't been doing that this year. So, look, I really think this this BBL break is going to be a really good thing for us. Um, you know, change of colour, change of colour ball. Um, in, in some respects, also just to sort of split the group up a little bit, you know. You know some guys go to the Sixers, some of the boys go to the Thunder, some of the boys would go to other, other teams, um, like the Stars or... I'm not sure where, I think that's about it. Just all, all us boys there. And then other guys who are not BBL contracted, it's time for them to go, you know, they can go back to great cricket, go back to their clubs um, and be in that environment. And, you know, I think that that'll be the best thing for us, just to like free ourselves up. You know, the best thing about the Big Bash is, you know, it, it brings that that fun, that excitement and that energy of, of playing cricket. Um, so if we can sort of have those traits and those characteristics, um, you know, when we come back into the into the shield setup, you know, I think that's where we'll probably have um, most of our success. Um, you know, the Sixers have been so strong for a long period of time, and, and you know, last year, you know, we've always made those, we've always made the eliminator or the knockout final for the last two or three years. So, you know, both New South, New South Wales teams are, are doing quite strong, and we're all talented cricketers. We just um, haven't quite found the recipe at the start of the year, and that's okay. Like um, sometimes that's what happens, and. No one means to ever go out there and, and play ba- and play badly or try and get out and whatever it is. It's just sometimes it's the, the nature of the game. And but I really think this break will be really good for us to you know sort of switch off and go into some different coloured uniforms. Um, even some different um, uh, players as well. You know, get to mingle with other guys from other states again. So um, yeah. So for myself, I guess it's been a bit frustrating um, from a personal point of view in terms of um, maybe the runs and the wickets column. I don't think I've taken, oh, I've taken one wicket this year. So I would like to try and add on, add on that as well. So, um, but for now, I guess focus on the BBL and um, yeah, hopefully I guess forties and fifties aren't too bad in BBL, but as I said, like, you know, it's those forties and fifties that I want to convert into, you know, hopefully uh, some big eighties or some big match winning innings uh, for the team. And yeah, we'll see how we go. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's KP Curtis Patterson not bowling you as much as you bowl yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been trying to get into his ear, but I'm I'm real quiet. So everyone tells me I'm pretty quiet. I should get to skip his ear. So I give him like little cues, you know, if he's at mid off and I'm at cover, I'll like bowl one back to him at mid off just to let him know, hey, man, I'm still I'm still ready to go in. But um, yeah, look, you know, Greenies come off what a nine for and some pretty good figures in the MCG game. We've got Adam Zampa, so. Yeah, look, two pretty good spinners. I think I'll let them, you know, do their job and I'll stick to batting. <laughs> I was going to ask you about at Greeny. Like, he's come in, um, obviously, he's played a, a, got a lot of experience around the world in T20 cricket, but now he's coming to the Blues, Shield debut, dominated with nine wickets mm. um, back in the, the Marsh Cup side. Um, yeah. Got four wickets there as well. You know, how, how good is that to see him performing well at, you know, top state level as well, leading into the, into the Big Bash? Yeah, look, um, oh, it's it's quite remarkable actually. Like, you know, someone who's um, I don't want to put words to his mouth, but I think at times he's probably been he's probably been labelled himself. He's probably been labelled as a bit more of a white ball bowler, Greeny, um, purely because of the opportunities he's he's been able to play in have been more in T Twenty franchise tournaments around the world. Um, but like, credit to him, like you know. It's it's actually quite it's, it's quite remarkable actually. Like I think from someone who has had most of his success and most of his opportunities in in white ball cricket, um, to continuously keep working on his craft in red ball, continuously keep working on his craft, and you know, you, you just you, you can't fault the man for trying for so long. Like you know, he's always come to our blue sessions, even when he's been outside the squad, um, outside the contracted squad. Um, he's always he's always came in and kept working on his game, kept working on his game, and. The one thing I really admire about Greeny, he's 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 um he's always looking to improve his game and how he can get better. And it sounds like a bit of a cliche in professional sports, like, hang on, aren't we aren't you all trying to like get better every day whenever you're training? But like like he 
it's it's very noticeable with him that he's always trying to improve and improve and he's always asking questions, asking feedback. And, and whether that's asking feedback from me or even some of the young rookies, like he, he's always constantly trying to work in his game and, and how he can how he can keep getting better. And I think that, and that just showed in his debut game, getting nine for at the SCG. And I know people say it was quite a spin-friendly wicket, but you've got to take nine, take nine wickets on debut. Um, for someone who's used to probably bowling with a white ball and bowling between four and ten overs to now having to bowl long periods of time. You know, there's a different art to bowling in, in red ball cricket than there is to white ball. And, you know, credit to him. Like, I, I thought he bowled the house down for us in that game and he bowled extremely well in that in down in Victoria as well. So, you know, and he... The, the best thing about Greeny as well is he's, he always brings this competitive edge to every team. And, you know, when you play with him on the field, you know, he just keeps lifting you up and he... He loves winning and he loves um, competing so bad that you always just go on the back of him, um, and he really drives that. So, yeah, he's had a he's had a, a he's um, I guess his inclusion into our squad's been been massive, and you know with the with Tanvir saying I've been out for the first half of the year, and Lyon with Test duties, um, you know those spots up for grabs for that. I guess that spinner role in New South Wales, and you know credit to Greeny, he's done really well in the second eleven stuff, um, and he's just been. He's just kept showing up for a long period of time. And if you show up long enough, you know, the opportunity is going to come. And the opportunity came from from here uh, to him and he, and he grabbed it. So, yeah, credit to him. Um, in, in that way, I'm, yeah, quite proud of him, actually, like how he's gone about it. So, yeah, very good. Yeah, I was speaking to him earlier in the year and um, he was telling me how he you know, does three or four sessions a week bowling at, at Silverwater, even though he's not on contract. So, you're definitely spot on there. Uh, I hate, hate to take you back sort of... Uh, too much of the New South Wales stuff because we're with the Thunder now. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking for sort of towards the back end of the season, um, what can the squad look to get out of this season? It's still looking to push for those those finals, or is it sort of one eye to the future and, and next next season as well? Yeah, look, um, probably haven't had those those chats yet. But from someone looking in who's part of the squad, like you know, I'm never really gonna. <sighs> The day I'm not playing to win the competition, I'll probably stop playing cricket. <laughs> if I lose that competitive edge and that, and I want to win a trophy, um, then I, I think I'll stop playing. So I think for us, you know, it doesn't matter what situation or what position you're in, you know, you're always trying to find ways of how we're going to win this competition. And, you know, if there is still a chance for us to do it, then of course we're going to give it our best and try and do it. And I guess the way I see the narrative is it'd be a crazy story if we won from here, like, Everyone's sort of written us off. Um, you know, we haven't won games the first six games, five games of the season. Haven't won. So if there was a way that we could go from here and make the final and win the final, like that would just be like a story for the times, really. So that would be awesome. So I think for me, that's the narrative um, going into the back half of the Shield season is, you know, we've had things that haven't gone our way. We've had a bit of rain delays that have cost us some some um, some results. Um, we've had bad light that's cost us some results. So... You know whether you win or lose those games, you just don't know. But you're always trying to you're always trying to put yourself in a position to get a to force a result, and that's the way you know we've got to play our cricket going into the this um this next um half of the year. So, um, I think I think for a little while now, um, New South Wales, you know, we've always had one eye on the future, and the reason why we've always had one eye on the future is because you know we're a state that breeds and and has a lot of young talent and. That's been proven from how well they've gone in the 17s and 19s tournaments. You know, New South Wales always, you know, either won won the trophy or they're in the finals. And I think we've always had a, 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 a an extremely, I guess, big amount of talent that's come from New South Wales cricket. And um, I think that's why we've always. I think it, I think we've always got one eye on the future in terms of where we can go um, and how we can go about it. But um, for now, like you know, the squad that we have, like. You know, there's guys who in there who have who have had an, enough of a taste of Shield cricket now and Red Bull cricket, and yeah, you could say they're young and and um in some in some respects, you know, like well, no, you could just say that, that they're quite young. But like you know, look at like myself, I think I've almost played 30 first class games. And a lot of them were like my first 10 when I was when I was, when I was like 17 um, playing in those touring games and whatever. But like you know, I've had 30 games of first class cricket, and you throw in Matthew Jilks as well. Um, who's had a good enough taste now? Baxter Holdout, wicket keeper. 
Um, even young Blake the guitarist, he's only played, you know, four or five games for the Blues, but his skill set, um, you know, shows that he's played a lot more. So, yes, although we, we throw in some young batters in there as well, um, and you're always thinking, you know, these guys might be the future or whatever they might be. Um, you know, this is a squad that, you know, ultimately we think that can that can go all the way and, and win a Shield, uh, a Shield title. So that's going to be the forefront of our mind is, you know, okay, um, you know, I guess – to win it from here would be an unbelievable story. And, you know, something that I love to tell my grandkids, if they even still watch Shield, they want to know about Shield Cricket. <laughs> um, later that, hey, look at this, you know, we wanted this from this position and I don't know, they might not even care. But at least, you know, that would be something that I'd love to cherish forever. So <clears throat> for me, that's sort of, um, that's sort of the way that I'm looking at that narrative being like, okay, everything hasn't gone our way, but, you know, Let's just go out and play cricket. And sometimes that's really dangerous just to be, you know what, who cares? Let's just go out and play and let's see what happens. And, you know, I mentioned it in a, in a previous interview, you know, when you completely get rid of that fear of failure and you just go out there and just play cricket and just go, you know what, I almost don't care how I'm going to go, but I'm just going to go out and play on my pure instinct. <clears throat> if I see the ball, I'm just going to hit it and have fun. And it's amazing. You take that pressure off yourself and suddenly everything just relaxes and you just – find a way to, I think, sometimes bring the best out of yourself. It'd uh, certainly make a good uh, documentary or, or feature film, something like that, if you came back and win it, something like a Leicester City title run, that kind of... Oh, uh, mate, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I know the test is coming up, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we'll see. We could, <laughs> no. we could have the shield instead of the test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how many viewers, uh, the viewership on that one, but um, I might be the most... I'll, I'll be definitely, yeah, watching that. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned uh, Matty Jilks, um, Ollie Davies is another, but um, not too many um, of the Thunder list have actually played with David Warner before. I don't think you have. Um, what's he What's he like when he comes back for New South Wales? Or will that be a new experience for you and, and the rest of the guys? Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, I've actually had a bit of an opportunity to play with Davey, um, purely from a Ramwick Peterson point of view, um, when he was serving his year ban. And um, I've had bits and pieces with him at New South Wales as well. So, oh, man, I mean... Yeah, actually, it's actually quite remarkable. Like, you know, even now thinking about, you know, the, the fact that Dave Warner is going to come back and play for us. Like, that's pretty that's pretty cool, man. Like, <laughs> that's so sick. So, um, yeah, like, it's just, I think, you know, he what he's really going to do is, obviously, the type of person he is, he's a, he's a you know, he's a character and, he, you know, he brings that fun element and, you know, he just makes everything, you know, the way he goes about his cricket, you see him when he's mic'd up, like, he's just a ball of energy. And I think... That's what he's going to bring to our team is um, that, I guess, that energy. Um, but I, I, the, the biggest thing for me with Davey, like, as you just mentioned, uh, Matthew Jilks, Ollie Davies, um, you know, young, blatant guitarist. What it's going to do for them is I think re- I think Davey will teach a lot of those guys the art of, of batting in, in T20 cricket, but also in, in red ball cricket as well, like, you know, the blokes played 96, 90, 97 tests for his, 98 tests for his country. Like, I think he knows a thing or two about red ball cricket as well. So, you know, he's, I think what he's really going to bring is that experience, that knowledge, because when he came back to us at Ramwick, that's one thing I really learned from Davey was, you know, how to actually go about batting. Um, and how does that look for, look for you? He explains it and the way you watch him go about playing, you go, man, this guy is just like, why is he always <clears throat> one or two steps ahead of the bowler? Like, he's just always one or two steps ahead. Like, you see the ball's running in, and he's, like, on the walk, and he's just, like, two, and he hits it straight away. And you just go, how's he done that? Like, he just knows what this guy's going to bowl, and he just knew where the gap was, and he just hits it there. And, you know, I know it's a, it's a completely different level, great cricket, but in some respects, that can be a little more difficult. And, <clears throat> you know, Davey taught me, I guess, a lot about batting, um, the way to go about batting and structuring an innings. And I think that's where I really think that's what he's going to bring to, you know, two young left-hand opening batters who are quite dynamic, like Matthew Jilks, Blake, the guitarist, like in my opinion, you know, they're, 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 you know, really wants to watch for the future and the way they go about their cricket. Oh, don't want to come across the wrong way and say they are, they remind me of Davey, but they're like, you know, they're explosive, hard hitting left-handed batters. And that's what Davey Warner is. And, you know, I think to, sh- to better share the change room with someone like that is invaluable. And, you know, they're going to learn so much. And I'm going to learn so much as well, like about 
how to go about it. And then on top of that, I guess for me, from a captaincy point of view, the man has so much knowledge, so much experience. You know, he's played T20 tournaments around the world. He's played however many T20 internationals for Australia. Um, he just knows a game of cricket. And that's what I'm really looking forward to is to be able to share the field with someone. And if I ever feel like don't want to go here, like, oh, look, I'll look at Midon and it's David Warner. Or I'll look at Cover and it's Alex Hales. And I'll go, ah, oh, I'm actually in pretty good company here. I've got two guys who know a lot about 2020 cricket. So I think I'll be okay. But yeah, for your point, like, yeah, Davey, like he's just... Yeah, he's just going to be incredible for us. Um, and I know how much he wants to give back. Um, he's always someone. He's, I know he's always been someone about giving back um, to cricket and and the, and I guess from where he's came from. And I guess he's restarted here, didn't he? So it's um, going to be nice to see him back and back with us. And um, I know he's going to bring some bums and seats because if he doesn't do well cricket, man, he'll be doing he'll be doing it at Showground Stadium. Now, one last one for you, for you, Jason, before I let you go. Um, it was perhaps you last year that was um, the unexpected uh, sort of surprise pack of the season. Who can we expect from the Thunder this season to, to put in a, uh, a good season that we perhaps might not be thinking about at this, this point? Good question. Um, man, there's so many, so many young guys. Um, look, I, I really... I really do think young Matthew Jilks and Ollie Davies are going to have some really good years. I think... We keep seeing like bite-sized little snippets of like wow, like that wow factor when they play. And and Jilksy's ninety-three at Showground Stadium against the Strikers on quite a tough wicket. Like he was smacking them everywhere. And then Ollie Davies also against the Strikers hitting you know Rashid Khan inside out over cover for six, <clears throat> um, hitting five sixes in a row against the Renegades. I think um, a couple of years back. <clears throat> so. Yeah, like I think those two, what they bring is a lot of flair, and um, it sort of annoys me how good they are sometimes. Like they just they hit balls in the crazy spots, and I'm just like, man, how do you do that? Like Ollie, like back foot, Rashid Khan six over cover, man, that stuff is unheard of. So like sometimes I'm like watching it at the non-strikers and just being like, man, like how have they done that? So I think for them, you know, they've had a they've had a good taste now of Big Bash. Um, you know, Jilsey's obviously been when he first started a little bit in out and had last year had a pretty good crack the whole season. Um, sort of towards the back in the year when Uzi came back, he was sort of floating in that batting order role. And now that's always quite tricky, but you know, if he does open the batting for the whole season, um, you know, I'm really excited for his season. Um, and whether it comes off for him or it doesn't like, you know, time will tell, but he's a very good cricketer. And I think he's going to be really good for us with the Thunder and, and Ollie Davies as well. Like Ollie's, you know, Ollie's had um hasn't had a prob- a full crack of big bash cricket yet. Like you know, he's come in, he's been he's he's been dropped, he's batted at four, he's batted at seven. You know, he's floated quite a lot. Um, but if he gets an opportunity to play a whole season or or at least a good stint of games, um, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see him play. Um, you know, he's he's shown I think that he can play at this level. You know, he's got a hundred against the West Indies. Um, only a couple of weeks back in a, in a, in a tour game yeah. uh, in, down in Canberra. So, yeah, I, I'm really excited about those two. They're, um, they're two young guys who are fantastic to have in New South Wales cricket, but also fantastic to have with us, with us at the Thunder. And they just bring so much flair. So, like, I don't know. And um, Ollie talks a bit of stuff on the fielding mic, so I'm not too keen on that. But from a batting point of view, yeah, he's good. Um, can you give that one away? Will, will Matty Jilks open open the batting? You've obviously got Alex Hales there, Riley Rousseau, um, and then Davey Warner coming back into the, the last five games. Yeah, look, I don't know. Like, we've got a lot of batting options this year um, to open the batting, and, um, you know, there's obviously Halesy is there. I- I'm not sure if Halesy and Davey are playing at the same time. I think one of them goes when the other one comes back in, which is kind of a little bit disappointing as a cream fan. You'd love to see Alex Hales and Dave Warner walk out. That Absolutely. would be really epic. So I'm not too sure yet. I've got to sit down with TB and probably go through that a little bit. Um, but no, I, I'm not exactly sure what that that roster looks like. Um, but we had a trial game against the Sixers um, yesterday. No, the day before yesterday on Friday. And um, I think Juicy would have smacked 65 or 70 off of Oh, a really hard, hard batting wicket at the SCG. So, um, yeah, I think he's done himself some some good favors there, and well, I know how good of a player he is. So, like, I, I don't know, I don't know. But if he does get that opportunity, like, I think he's definitely someone to 
to have to watch out for. Like I, I think you know he's he's had a good taste of big bash cricket now, and if um you know he just plays freely and plays with open mind, um yeah he's going to do some great things. Fantastic. Well, Jason, thanks for joining us on the Unplayable Podcast. All the best for the the big bash and the rest of the season with New South Wales, and uh, looking forward to seeing those leagues getting rolled out. <laughs> Yeah, after trying, after trying, um, get a few more lessons off Tanvir, I reckon before I try and bring him out too much. But no, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. All the best to Jason Sanger in KFC BBL 12. Let's see if his run scoring and his leadership can catapult the Sydney Thunder further up the table this season. And don't forget, if you're going to be taking your BKT Big Bash tipping seriously this summer, you're going to need to submit your tips for tonight right away because it all kicks off tonight. But if you do miss that deadline, there's still plenty to play for. So jump over to tipping.cricket.com.au and get your tips in. Thanks for listening to this episode and we'll catch you next time on the Unplayable Podcast.